the forcefulness means the reluctance of society towards the lovers seldom though you can see a short picture of a secret wedlock of romeo and juliet a child's career is molded only under the guidance of parents and parenthood is very very challenging how energetic are we the society is just throwing challenges after challenges yet hello everyone every day brings a new learning and vidyashram brings you everything that is ought to keep you educated and enlightened today we are here with another new session amalgamating everything that we have discussed former the latter one would throw a picture about the thematic representation of poetry which is very pivotal while you turn up to the titular expression while i say titular expression it's nothing but the significance of the title if they would have asked you represent thematically the poem so and so with ellipses of course in that case you have to be keen enough in understanding the title first your answer lies in the titular expression so much of the examples and paradigms are shown here it's all that you are ought to heed interest so going forward let's understand the definition of theme what is theme i read it out for you an idea that recurs in recurs in the sense which comes or hit you on and on which reminisces the way it is in or pervades pervades which instigates to understand a work of art or literature theme is something which will tell you or give you an idea what is the work all about it can be anything such theme implies both on to poetry as well as prose and even to the play as well as sonnets be it anything that is a piece of art in terms of literature is the theme so representation of theme is very very important and eventually you have something such themes are the fundamental what is the meaning of fundamental fundamental very very significant very very important and often universal ideas explored in a literary work theme is always related to the universal work of literature anything that is confined to writing if we are writing something we have to have a theme in our work what is the theme we are writing about if we are writing about society what is the theme is the theme about love hatred riot and war so such it is a situation so talking presently about this our situation is more of pathetic we cannot go out we cannot move across beat anything such that's a theme of any art so theme recurring that to you it pervades a work of art or literature before you understand the poem it's very important you understand the title and the expression is known as titular expression so how is that here is an example Romeo and Juliet is nothing new to you at all it's no new to you while we study about the question and answer session there is a formal class given to you you have to go back to the videos to understand the theme and better late than never if you haven't watched those videos this would be suffice so you can see the family riot these are the feuding families we are talking about capulet and montague romeo and juliet juliet belong to capulet family romeo belong to montague family so there is a riot the, it takes me nothing long back to explain you this so what is the theme what is the theme of the play what is the theme of the extract that is drifted away so the key themes in romeo and juliet are love romeo and juliet personify love i repeat romeo and juliet personify love conflict where there is love there is conflict and where there is love and conflict you have a family so who is responsible love paves the way to conflict and conflict paves the way to family riot and family stand responsible for hatred so here you can find three themes put together the key note is love conflict and family in a frame wherever you have love you have lovers you will find conflict 
and what causes that it's a family that causes conflict in their love story so what is the second theme all three themes which are the three themes are we talking about we are talking about love conflict and family here family is also the central points family is also central theme interlink with one another if you have imagined love leads to conflict and these two leads to family riot so family also is a pivotal part of the structure next the forcefulness of love so what is forcefulness is romeo forcing juliet to fall in love or the other way around the forcefulness means the reluctance of society towards the lovers to stop them from loving each other that's the forcefulness of love romeo and juliet enters a wedlock if the family would have been in good terms associated well they would have had a very pompous nuptial they would have had a very pompous celebration but they entered a secret wedlock which shows that they are forced to take the step only because of the societal norms they knew the consequence so one theme falls with this also next love as the cause of violence imagine if romeo and juliet weren't in love at all william shakespeare wouldn't have introduced us to the world an unprecedented love story wouldn't have been an unprecedented love story we wouldn't have come across the name romeo and juliet so every love story has a consequence and that consequence is always catastrophic so do romeo and juliet's also so here it's a cause of violence many killed there was a war there was a riot or there was a family conflict romeo and juliet had a very catastrophic end so why love has a theme of conflict love as a theme of violence also if there was no love story there was no violence and while there is no violence it's a happy ending they lived happily ever after but yes we wouldn't know romeo and juliet next the individual versus society we are talking about individual romeo as an individual and juliet as an individual and society society consists of crowd society consists of a lot of people so they are fighting against the two lovers are fighting against the odd society where there are very big in number society constitutes of many people so it's across individual and the society the conflict between one or two with many so who will win of course the society has to win next the overarching power of patriarchy what is the meaning of overarching you pronounce this as overarching and not overarching it's overarching power of patriarchy what is patriarchy male dominant society wherein men are told to be the head of the family they ruled the society there was no mother role there was nothing to do with the feminine power at all it's all about male chauvinistic society so it showed the overarching power of patriarchy the continuous power of patriarchy when there is a variation when there is always a upheaval of patriarchy so that's also one of the themes patriarchy refers to the male dominant society it's not a new term of, of course we have been coming through this incessantly in all the chapters that we have studied especially studying about romeo and juliet next the theme of death very important while you have love and conflict these leads to death the end is very catastrophic and you are palpable with that and you are not oblivious about the fact also it's obvious that romeo and juliet were destined to die because they had gone against the societal norms and what are the societal norms the enmity is the societal norms next the inevitability of fate as i told you prior they were destined to die it was a short relationship between romeo and juliet which took their life it might be a 13 day relationship after seeing each other where they fell in love they entered a secret wedlock they thought that we cannot live without each other and so and then they decided that let's go against the society wherein the society can 
kill the lovers but the love story never dies and even till now though romeo and juliet is a work of fiction it throws a light that there were many lovers who lost their life it can be heer ranja sohni mahiwal salim anarkali and who not many examples to go across so they were destined to the fate and what was their fate their fate was to die next marriage seldom though you can see a short picture of a secret wedlock of romeo and juliet if we have studied juliet soliloquy it was all after the nuptial a secret wedding that juliet is waiting in her balcony so that romeo can creep into her balcony and her room and next the absurdity underlying family feuds the absurdity absurdity is nothing but the awful nature of the family family as i have told you plays a very pivotal role in every of the works of literature it should be only because of the family that the love stories can take up a tragic end and romeo and juliet stands no more different from those and here it says that the absurd it absurdity weird underlying family feuds it's all about family feuds it starts with the family feud or revenge in between capulet and montague so what is the reason behind Shakespeare does not reveal that at all from the very start of the play there is no reason for this feud at all if you go back to the history it it it's all assumption and nothing else it's all supposedly the supposedly it plays so such kind of notion is what we find in the play romeo and juliet these themes would suffice your writing understand the theme if you forget all these points understand love hatred family conflict and death everything are interlinked so which is next we are on children by khalil gibran you can see a father adoring his child a mother adoring her child so parents play a very significant role in nurturing a child a child's career is molded only under the guidance of parents and parenthood is very very challenging that's why we say let's not challenge our parenthood let's not take parenthood as a challenge let's take parenthood as compassion let's not promise that we will give you this we will give you that wherein in the end we are left with no promises at all in the other way around let's give the hope of optimism to our children and here as we know there is an answer from the prophet which states that your children are not your children so what is the thematic representation childhood and modernity childhood how is childhood related to modernity modernity is nothing but a wave of expression or a brighter side to look upon or in a very other broadcast way that is modernity childhood and modernity a new perspective the theme is about childhood you know what is childhood modernity is a other perspective of understanding parenthood next expectations versus reality what is expectation parents always expect that they have to look after their child they have all the powers over their children but what is reality it ends up with a harsh reality that no your duty was only to give them birth and after you give them birth your duty ends there and the struggle of your child starts so that's the reality you don't owe anything over them you can't say that they are my puppet and i am their parents no parenthood takes up a challenge to state that i cannot dwell in my child's tomorrow or i am not my child's future i am only the past i can be the present but i can't be my child's future my child's future lies in themselves and he is destined and he is already destined to what he has to be so that's where it is the reality that shows a harsh reality the prophetic notion what is the prophetic notion it says that your children are not your children they come through you but they are not from you they share the blood they share flesh everything but their future does not bother you or you should not bother their future you are just a bow and they are the arrow and who will lead the two it's an archer who is an archer it's a god 
God is an archer. So mind you, this is a reality and that's what he holds. The prophetic notion means whatever he has asserted in whole of the poem. That's what it is talking about parenthood, his notion about parenthood. The harsh reality, this compiles everything of such. This compiles the first three points. The harsh reality is about modernity, a brighter perspective, a new perspective to understand that. This is not parenthood. The parenthood should be like you give them the birth and that's your duty and your duty ends there. Now it's their look over what they decide. You cannot owe them. You have given them the birth. They come through you but they are not you. So you means parents. They have their own identity. Your child has his or her own identity. So that's the harsh reality pertaining to the three amalgamated. Next, realization and acceptance. What is realization about parenthood? What is true parenthood? I have given birth. I'm done with my duty. It's just to look over that he or she is doing well in his future. I'll not impose my ideas on them. That's realization and acceptance. They have accepted. They have accepted the fact that yes, whatever the perfected notions are, whatever prophet has asserted is true to the fact that I should not impose my ideas. I am above. I will be the one and I will aim at my child's career through his perspective because I cannot dwell in his future and I have accepted the truth. And these underlying points are very quintessential. These points will help you to understand the notion of titular expression on children. Next, when you are old, a love poem, a deprived love poem, all the illustration speaks louder than the words. And this illustration says that he is thinking of writing something. Of course, this is an illustration of fiction. And here is a lady who is reading so that she wouldn't regret after she has lost the love. Next, what is the theme? Theme is love, rejection and time. Love of the poet, rejection of the lady to the poet and time which heals everything or time and tide waits for none time which will make her realize that what she has lost in her life. So these three play a very significant role in framing the theme of the expression. And what is the expression? The expression is when you are old. Are the major themes of this poem. Love and beauty. We are talking about the poet's love. Poet says that I don't love your external beauty. I love your internal beauty. The divinity, the pilgrim soul. The goodness, what you have. I love your soul. And what about beauty? Beauty refers to her internal as well as external wherein most of them are only infatuated towards her external love. They prefer her external beauty to the inner one. And that's beauty also. Love never fades. But beauty does. And that's the theme. Aging. We all age with time. Though we say that age is just a number, Abhi Tome Jawan who, at the end of the day, it's a realization that and acceptance to that we are aging, our body starts sinking, we look old and what not, there is no charm, there is no energy, the vitality and so and aging is also a theme. So that realization and aging are the two faces of the same coin. That's the theme, one of those. Loss and regret. What is a loss? It can be either to the port and also the lady love that he, she, he is talking about. And regret. She might regret that what she has lost in her life. She would think that alas, I would have accepted his love. I would have reciprocated to his love. So until it's too late, why can't I? That's why he writes the poem in his youth to give that to her so that she wouldn't regret. We don't know what happened after that. And history says that or literature says that the poet's beloved married another man and his love was unrequited. Next, fleeting nature of life and love. Fleeting in the sense a transition, a transient love. 
द चेंजिंग नेचर ऑफ लाइफ एंड लव नॉट एवरी डे कैन बी द सेम वी से दैट नॉट एवरी डे इज द संडे टूडे आर फीलिंग्स माई बी वेरी डिफरेंट टूमोरो इट माई चेंज टू एनी अदर सो देर इज अ ट्रांजिशन इन आर लाइफ देर इज एवरी टाइम देर इज अ चेंज इन आर लाइफ and even in this poem also we can see the fleeting nature fleeting in the sense fly away it means that to get a change the old flown away to the farther distance wherein we cannot reach and now it's time to change so that's also one of the themes of the poem next to the food from its child after you see this illustration wherein a man is parted one with the brain the other one with the heart brain refers to the society this heart refers to you you got this i put up in the quote wherein it states that man is parted away or he is cut in between stating that how do i control my mind and heart society says something but my heart says that you do what you want but at the end of the day i should follow the norms of the society i should have all the trials and tribulations i have to succeed and how do i do that it's only possible while i follow the norms of society yet i'm reluctant to do so we are born in a very conservative society and there are certain norms that's also for good many for bad many for worse also but here is a man who is parted across mind and his heart so what do we have in the titular expression to the food from its child it starts from the food wherein the food has to see all the struggles born as a human being we have to face the societal norms so what is that the theme of a shoe go back to the videos to watch show represents society wherein you are caged next the butterfly and an apple in the very root society the child wants to be either butterfly or an apple but can that be no expectation versus reality on and on next the trials and the tribulations the difficulties that they face every child you and me have to face all the difficulties in our life only then we can taste the fruit of success expectation and reality this has been a major theme major theme even on children as well as to the food from its child so what is the similarity that there are certain expectations which isn't in the form of reality or we cannot reach to the nook of the reality so what is expectation and reality leading to it's leading to the journey of life i'll give you a very lively example to understand the best paradigm is taken as a titanic ship our life is no less than a titanic ship there was a iceberg which took another river only it hit with a small inch with a small inch the whole ship was drowned only taking its people drowned to death life is exactly the same we always have that glitch or our life is so very sporadic that unfortunately or it's very unfortunate to think about the catastrophe just like a titanic ship it sailed so very calmly on the ocean isn't it our life is also just like a titanic ship which is moving very very smoothly all the sudden there are trials and tribulations where our life hits and we are drowned but yes unlike the ship of titanic unlike titanic ship we have all the prowess to merge and say that life i am back so that's the journey of life monotonous adulthood what do you do every day you wake up take all the rebukes from your family parents sisters brothers neighbors teachers get ready come to school again you are under the strict surveillance of teacher take all the rebukes study go back home no games no watching tv again study so this study 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 becomes so very monotonous so you will have a very monotonous childhood there is nothing new death and reincarnation it's always like you are born leave for the society you are born you are living for the society work for the society you are born you are in the society you are working for the society you die for the society 
So can you see the interlinking of and that's what we call it as monotonous adulthood. There is no newness. There is no eureka form of expression in your childhood. And also death. You are born, you have to die. In between what? What is that you have achieved? Nil. It's zero. There is nothing that you have achieved. And reincarnation. What is reincarnation? Have you seen life after death? Is this your another incarnation? Or reincarnation of something else. Life is such confusion. So do the poems also sometimes. So after this, what do you have? Reincarnation. We never know what happens. Next, ability of human spirit. What is the ability of human spirit? What is that we are capable of? How energetic are we? The society is just throwing challenges after challenges. Yet, we are moving, surpassing all the hurdles to reach the pinnacle of success. And that's the ability of human spirit. Though it sounds that our childhood is monotonous, we only live and die, we work, we toil 24-7. It's all been work and work, no peace of mind. So that's not life. Life is what we make out of that. And that's what it shows as the ability of human spirit. We have that power, we have that prowess to prove ourselves good or to make our life a hell or a heaven. And you are introduced to the serenity of nature. Kuembu describes heaven being on earth. If we can't anticipate heaven on earth, where else it can be? Now we cannot go in search of heaven. We don't know how heaven looks like. So that's why we can create one on earth. And that's what he shows it as the serenity and the calmness, the tranquility of nature. So what is the theme? Demystifying. Demystifying, unveiling or revealing the secret. Human notion of heaven. We don't really know how heaven looks. Whatever we have known, it's only it's a fiction. Only in movies we have seen. And that's a work of fiction. So if we really want to witness a true heaven, it should happen only here. Here is a place. Earth is a place where we can recreate heaven. It's all not only create heaven. It is recreate heaven. Next, divinity of nature. Nature in itself is a boon to human beings. Nature is our second womb or in the other way around, it's our first womb. That's only in nature that we can find solace and solace is nothing but the satisfaction, the harmony, peace, tranquility, everything put together is imbibed in mother nature and that's also one of the themes. Next, the theme of heaven. What is the theme of heaven? What is heaven? Can you describe heaven? We cannot describe heaven in particular. It's just like where there is utopic. A world of utopic where everything seems to be very, very happy, happy, jolly, jolly. No examination, no teachers. It's all game and game, money and money. Even though you don't work, you don't study, you're earning. That's what heaven looks like. For you, if that is the same, it should be. Next, serenity and agitation. Serenity and agitation. Agitation to go against or to revolt or something that is rebuking. Serenity, peace, tranquility and you find the beauty. When you see this, that defines serenity and agitation. While the earth is in tranquil, while we find tranquility and harmony, the time we vandalize the earth and that time it becomes an agitation. So this is also one of the themes. If posing a question like, presently, is our earth a heaven? Our answers would be no. It should be no under the skeleton mark. Next, paradise and pandemonium. We can create paradise out of earth and also pandemonium. Pandemonium is nothing but hell. So here, H for H. P for P. Heaven, hell. H for H. If somebody questions you, what is the antonym or an opposite of heaven? You have to say it as hell. If your question, paradise, what is the antonym or opposite of paradise? You can't say hell. It should be pandemonium. Pandemonium is nothing but the hell. So the theme of paradise, it's in our hand. It's in the hands of human beings to create hell out of heaven or heaven out of hell. In the other way around, we have the capability to turn this earth into heaven or earth into hell. So decision lies in you. Next, 
water when i talk about water been explaining in the video classes if you have to watch back there it's all about the caste system even water has witnessed the dalit suffering all the ages and that's where it starts and that's where it ends aha uh -huh. it did not end yet the first theme is theme of revolt water is a witness for centuries that the dalits had to surpass all the hurdles or till now they are suffering only because of their caste the superiority and the inferiority so what is the difference between a person who is in the highest of the category and the one who is in the lowest of the stature so how do you juxtapose so how do you divide how do you distinguish so if it comes as a movie dialogue that look at my blood and your blood it's equal the air that we breathe is equal the water that we drink is the same so where is the opportunity to term it as a superiority complex and inferiority complex so water knows the truth and what is the truth from the centuries the centuries have witnessed that the dalits were ill treated and that's where it states water water is very powerful water is a basic source of mankind and also survival there are people who are deprived even of the natural resources such like water so that's what we term as revolt there were many movements there were many fights that only took place only because of water next the trials and the tribulations of dalits the downtrodden those were the times when they termed as downtrodden now they no longer stand as downtrodden they have equally come up with all the agitations and movements water as a symbol of bloodshed and violence the dalits were beaten and were profusely bled to death they were dying only because they voiced out they agitated they were skeptical about their livelihood only because they came against all the odds or the superiority complex and that's why there were bloodshed and violence also we see water as a mere substance scientifically talking about but water is everything the theme of eternal caste conflict eternal it was it is and it will be in the past also we studied present also we are studying and future also we will study about the discrepancy or disparity of people amongst themselves we don't even think that though we are educated how far do we stand from education dr b r ambedkar fought for the same mahatma gandhi fought for the same we are still fighting it's only in the textbook it remain that equality secularism no difference no discrepancy no disparity but what appears in the globe is this and that has been the witness though next theme of well well plays a very pivotal role where i have explained you in my formal class that the village was divided and there were wardas also wardas where the deprived people dwell and in the village it's only the superior class a girl from wada would want to fetch water from the well but they have to wait for the upper class people to come and draw water from the well and they also thought that the even the shadows of the dalits would despise them or if i have to say that would defile them the shadows were also cursed and they were tabooed inside the village so well which is a natural source and also it says that the water which never gets parched out of the well it's the same way the caste system also will never disappear water in the well doesn't parch isn't it every time you will have water though it is drought of flood be it anything water has a capability to even flow away with the people or if i have to say in simple water can destroy it's also a theme of destruction and also it's a theme of survival so well plays a very pivotal role and you can see the struggle that the wada people couldn't even approach the well they would wait out of the village inside their wada under the scorching sun so that some superior class comes in and draws water from the well so that terms to be the theme of well and talking about all the themes and representations these quintessential points will help you in writing the examination until then here's with the ashram for you standard retained on learning i'll see you yet again with a new session until then take care